All right, today is week four of a series we call in cuffing season. If you're ready, make some noise. All right, here we go. All right. Wow. This whole series has been special to me because this series, um, like a few other series, has the, um, the, the power, I believe, to if somebody checks in from beginning to end, literally transform your entire life. In week one, we started talking about the subtitle of this series, Cuffing Season, the things that you love that don't love you back. How many people can name three things right now that you love that you know don't love you back, okay? All right, see, some of y'all are lying right now because that cake you ate yesterday, it don't love you back. <laughs> and that person you keep DM, DMing, they don't love you back. They're using you. Okay, can I already go for it? Let me ask the question again. How many people have things in their life that you love that do not love you back? Hands, please, or I'm going to start calling you out. All right. The reason we have to be that honest about what we're, what we're talking about right now is because God can never heal what you will not reveal. Every sermon, I'm trying to give you an opportunity to say, me too. It's me. Here I am. Look. That's what I did. Like, that's all I'm trying to get you to do because God will never knock down a place where you have the door locked. And I know you want him to because if you God, you would just, he said, but I'm a gentleman. And I'm not. That's why I gave you choice. I stand before you today giving you two options, life or death. I'm going to give you the answer to the test. Choose life. But you still have a choice. So today... I want to go further in this series, but I, I got to beg you, please go back as we are at week four. If you have not watched, dissect, and actually ruminated and meditated on the past three messages, it's going to be imperative for you to be able to hang on for the next how many ever messages this is. <laughs> I feel like we're in a flow right now. So, so week one, we talked about the things that we love that don't love us back. Week two, we got specific and said we're uncuffing from comfort. Last week, we got, we got, uh, we got knocked around, and, 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 and God told us that we need to actually uncuff from convenience. And this week, I'm coming in even heavier. Okay, okay, I just want to, I want to warn you, but we're going to start light so then we can go deep, okay? So, so I know it's been a little, a little rough for everybody, so, so I want to play a game starting off, okay? And, and, and we're going to play this this game um could you give me some cheesy game show music please maestro go ahead and do that and and before you do that before you do that i need a couple like who's the newest married couple in the room is somebody been married for less than a year can i see anybody's hands less than a year uh, I, I need i need christian ain't christian christian and dash where they at are they here is both of them here all right come on come on we all give it up for christian and dash coming to my impromptu game show that they know nothing about hurry <laughs> it's live <laughs> all right here we go how long y'all been married <laughs> four, four months brother you're gonna really need to know these dates dog you're gonna get in real trouble um I'm gonna play a game. Cheesy music cue now, please. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good. Could you put my game show um, graphic up there? And I need y'all to come up here for me and I just need y'all to stand right here. Com uh, this is comparison and compatible. Okay, so this is all I want y'all to do. I don't wanna mess up your marriage. <laughs> but, but, but I wanna just see where y'all at right now, okay? So I'm gonna put two things on the screen. And I want you to step to the side that, that you think that thing is the thing you would want for the rest of your life, okay? Now, I don't need this to be like a whole bunch of, oh, debating and maybe, oh, no, no, no. I mean, you got three seconds, okay? And so I'm gonna put two things on there and you go to each side, which one you think, okay? And then I want y'all to play at home, okay? So in the chat, I want you to do in the audience, I want you to yell out which one and, and we're gonna play this game together, okay? Is everybody ready? Ready! I said, studio audience, are you ready? Okay, okay, okay. Che che cheesy music, you gotta play the whole time. Okay, there, there you go, okay. Which one? Nike or Adidas? Okay, they, they together on that one. All right, here we go. 
Which one? Football or basketball? basketball. Dang, they just, y'all are in it together. All right, I'm going to step aside. Here we go. Which one? Tesla or Mercedes? Uh-oh. All right, here we go. Come on, I need you to put it in chat. Which one? Snow cones or ice cream? Oh, these are some snow cone people. You see them in the middle right there. Get on the, get on the side, Christian. Okay. It's because they put chocolate ice cream. If they would have put cookies and cream, that would have been good. Which one? Instagram or TikTok? Which one? What y'all say? Okay, put it in the chat. Okay, okay, okay. Everybody say, which one? Beach or mountains? What you call me? No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Play. Everybody say which one? which one? Country mansion or city penthouse apartment? Oh, she said, ah, she walked over there with the quickness. Okay. Which one? Since we're in Oklahoma, OU or OSU? She said, I don't care. My hair is pink. It don't even matter. Okay. That was level one. Now we're going to increase for level two and see what's going to happen, okay? Everybody say, which one? which one? Now this is somebody or something. This is the only one you have forever. Which one do you want, okay? All right. LeBron James or Max from the YMCA? A gourmet meal or dog food? What, y'all, y'all not playing no more? <laughs> Writing a book or being booked in jail? Who came up with these questions? A, a G-Wagon or A-Wagon? They haven't moved. A laptop computer or a typewriter? Somebody said a typewriter? Where are you from, 1814? What is... Okay, There's a couple more. Your dream house or a Barbie dream house? Y'all, not, y'all still not playing? <laughs> okay, dream house. A cassette tape or streaming services like Spotify? Okay, they did, okay. Can we give it up for our contestants today, Christian? And his beautiful wife, Dash, thank you. Your prize is nothing. I love you. I love you. I love you. (laughs) Give it up for Caleb Sean, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, The truth is, in round one, there was actual things that were comparable. In round two, there was no difference, and most people would say there's no comparison. LeBron James or Max from the YMCA? My dream house or a barbecue? They're on completely different levels. And and, and so so I have one more comparison real quick. Come here, uh, Bella, and come here, uh, G or Ava, whichever one. Come here. Yeah, bring G.G. Can we do my baby? Tell me the baby. That's daddy's baby. Look at daddy's baby. This is the... Who dressed you today? You look cute. Put the little baby heels on. Did your mama see you before you left the house? Okay, you look good. Now, now if I came up here as a loving father... Hi, daddy's baby. You did... And, and look at daddy's yay, that's daddy's baby. Okay, is that daddy's joy baby? What you looking at? You looking at just, just, dear, that's daddy's joy baby. This is Gia Joy and Bella Monet. If I came up here as a loving father and said, I need everybody's help, help me compare these two. Which one? Silence. Because some things were not made To be compared. There's no way as a loving father that both of these babies who I was the first person that held them 
that I watched them cut. That, yeah, what? They, I watched it. I watch you get cut out of your mama. I, I, I've changed diapers. In the, there's no way that you could ask me. Yes, amen. Amen. This one going to be a speaker, y'all. She, are, she, are, she love the lights. You, you good? Hey, what's your sister's name? You say Bella? You say Bella? Say Bella. Say Bella. <laughs> This week, we've been hitting a lot of milestones, but there's no... Say Bella. Say Bella. You're going to play me in front of all of these people. There's tons of people watching. We'd have practiced this a thousand times. Say Bella. I love you too. This, there's no way I could be able to choose one. Because they're both, watch this, masterpieces. Okay. And I need you to look at yourself and look at your neighbor and say, I'm a masterpiece. Say it till you believe it. Say, I'm a masterpiece. Say it with faith. Say, I'm a masterpiece. Can y'all give it up to my two little masterpieces? Okay. I, I brought them up here because... Today, I got to talk to us about something that's killing our calling. Something we've been cuffed to. We've been cuffed to comparison. It's robbing you of the life God is intending for you. And this is that stuff that don't nobody want to talk about because it's so usual for you that you don't even see it as comparing. You say things like, I'm just evaluating. Just weighing my options. Just looking so I can get an idea of what they have so I can know what I need to desire. But under all of those weak words, there is something that is motivating negatively many of our actions, ideas, and thoughts. And this literal disease is called comparison. And it's going to be quiet in here today because many of the people that are listening are cuffed to it. Some of y'all are watching the message right now, still scrolling on Instagram because you're cuffed to compare. You follow people you don't even like to make sure you're doing better than them. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm going to come straight for it. You always, what they, what's, what they wearing? Y'all, some of y'all done sent your friend to the party ahead of time. Some of them sent, what you wearing? Why you, I never want to be out of sync to be in a place where I'm not up to a certain level because I know somebody's always going to be comparing me to something or someone else. And many of you are being robbed of your life because you are more committed to comparing than you are your calling. And today I'm coming to help you be set free. I want you to have your life back. I want you to enjoy today. It might not be everything that you want it to be, but it is what you got. So God wants you to enjoy it here. And that means you have to be uncuffed from comparison. When I just brought my daughters up here, there's no way I could compare them and literally choose one or the other because they were made as masterpieces. And that's why I need you to understand how our God has formed us. Ephesians 2.10. I didn't just make up those words. I need you to declare this over your life. No matter what waist size you are, no matter what you live in today, no matter what job you have, no matter what tax bracket you're in, no matter how pretty your kids are or how greater personalities your kids have it does not matter for we are God's masterpiece he has created us a new in who Christ Jesus and he does that so we can do something so we can do the good things that he planned for us a long time ago. You can't do the good things not liking what God's given you. 
You cannot do the good things he planned for you and you are comparing yourself to everything and everyone and every other and not looking at what God has placed in your hands. All you have is all you need, but yet you are disgruntled about what God's put in your hand and you're still not even using it. But you're still using your sight and your ears and you've been cuffed to comparison so I need to say it to you today some of my points is like pow just right there but but I need you to hear me say this and I, I I'm saying it because this is something I was cuffed to for years it, it, it wasn't just until the last probably four or five years that I've been uncuffed from caring what anybody thinks about what God is doing in my life why because looking at your lane makes me stumble in mine If I'm so focused on every step you taking and every step that you gaining and how far you are behind me, then I will stumble on the thing that God has called me, the lane he's called me to run in. Today, I want to set you free. That's why this is a point everybody needs to write down and get in your mind. Nobody's ever told you this, but compare products, not people. I'm fine with you. Deciding, do you want Cl uh, Clorox or, 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 or Tide? Figure out which one. That, compare those. Try them. I'm fine with you deciding if you want Chick-fil-A or Popeyes. D -d -d compare, you can compare those all day. But me or you? Your church or their church? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. This boss or that, like, compare products, not people. God never calls a product in the Bible a masterpiece. But he calls every human creation. A ma Somebody say, I'm a masterpiece. And I'm going to keep saying it this whole time because some of you have been so wore out by the world and your own comparison that you don't even feel it no more. You, you, don't, you don't even like you. Okay. I see it when, when, when you're sitting there and, and there's breath in your body, but you still will not come places because you don't want to be compared to how you looked in a different season. You, you, you won't even show up to do what God's asked you to do. Yes, yeah, your first time. Stop comparing your seed to somebody's tree. Why in the world are you here? Knowing this is your first time ever public speaking and you want to sound like me? This is 12 years of failure. Like, like, but you won't start on your first step. Because you're comparing yourself to somebody who inspired you. Be careful how much you listen and look to people who are so great if your self-esteem is not so solid. <laughs> Because what it will do is rob you of the first steps that you need to make and you're being so critical. That's what I need to do. I need to do cuff to critical as well. Because some of us are so critical of ourselves that we won't even give ourselves the grace to become. No baby comes out the womb walking. No matter how big the baby is. You can have a 14 pound baby. And that mug going to still be youngest, just limp, limp. Why? Because growing takes time. And if you don't stop comparing your business and your idea and your family and your pictures, you can't pay for a professional picture. It's all right. Set up that Polaroid and take a picture of you and your family. You might need a stick to do it. But I'm, what I'm saying is, you may be missing out on what is the greatest area of your contentment. Uh-oh. Here's a C word we don't mess with a lot in 2022. Contentment. Y'all know that scripture we always quote? I can do all things through Christ who does what? Strengthen. That is not a scripture that is usually quoted in context. Paul is talking about, I've been rich, I've been poor, I've been beat, 
I've been in jail. I've been praised. I've been in. And now I realize I'm content because I can do all things. All of that crap. Through Christ who stripped. That does not mean go climb a wall and, 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 and hang from it with one hand. I can do all things. I can, that's not that scripture. I can be content. I can do this. I can work a job where they don't pay me because I know I'm getting the level of understanding and character I need to run my own business. So I can, I can do all things. Ugh. See, you don't like the scripture in context. You like it as little quotes on Instagram. But let me help you understand what this really means. I can serve a family who doesn't appreciate me the way that I need to be appreciated because I know that God is seeing every time I get up and make these stinky kids and lunches and cut off the crust and they just run out and tell me they want Chick-fil-A anyway. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> But I can do all things. But it's, it's hard to stay content when you're study comparison. When you're, when, when, when you're studying and, and you're, you're stuck. I like that one. It's hard to be content when you're stuck in comparison. So, 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 so today, I'm going to let you know we're getting uncuffed from comparison. Um, and, and, and just in case... Because I hear some people right now, well, I mean, I, I, I need to know, I, I have to compare because that's what allows me to make educated decisions. I need metrics. I need to know the numbers. I need to know the facts. I need to know the data. I understand that for your business and all the things. So, 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 so write this down. God gave it to me on the way out here, so I don't even think they got it as a point. But, but watch this. Um, uh, if you have data, only use metrics to measure volume, not value. If you need numbers, how many Instagram likes and how, how, how much money did we make and how many people, okay, I'm fine. Use the metrics for what they were used for to measure the volume of what's happening. But you can do something great that only two people like, but it had amazing value. Please do not confuse volume and value. Some of the greatest albums ever made, only a thousand people have heard them. Some of the greatest books ever written, they are not on the New York Times bestseller list. They're in somebody's binder. And, 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 and what I'm telling you, they're not even bound yet. Do not sum up the value because of the volume. And I don't know who I'm telling this to, but there's too many people who have in this Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and, and, and LinkedIn age have summed up their value because of low volume. I'm coming to set you free. You may not preach to 10,000, but those five youth groups that you are pouring into every week, that has value to God. I'm about to preach this thing. You may not be raising up an army, but you're raising two little kids by yourself and teaching them the ways of God. It has value. Tammy, what God has placed in you has value. Project, what God has said to you has value. The movie may be shot on a camcorder, but I'm telling you, just because if it's a low volume does not mean that it's not high value. That's nasty. And that's why you have to unplug from comparison. Because there's a lot of trash that gets publicized. Oh, come on. There's a, there's a lot of things that have metrics that don't mean nothing. And somehow, if we're not solidly attached to our identity in Christ, we'll start taking on the culture's identity for success. Do you know what success is in the kingdom of God? Obedience. Ah, oh, you missed it. It's not how big it gets. It's not how many people follow it. Do you know I was obedient when there were seven youth in the youth group? Like... Pastor Mike Todd, when did you become Pastor Mike Todd? When I said yes to God? Yeah. <laughs> Some, do you think I need man's recognition? Come on. To be affirmed and verified by God? Yeah. 
It was my yes when nobody was looking that qualified me for the platforms I stand on today. If you want what I got, you say yes where I said yes. And, and this is what I'm telling you right now. That's why, because we can't go to those places, you have to be okay with your race and your lane. And when God asks you something, you need to say yes. Success is not about volume. It's about obedience. Oh, I feel something happening to me right now. And that's, that, that's, why, that's why I need to tell you. Everybody say, I'm uncuffing <laughs> from comparison. This whole section, y'all mad at me already? Y'all mad at me? Somebody say, I'm uncuffing, I'm uncuffing. From, comparison. from comparison. So write this down. People weren't made for comparison, yet we are consumed by it. Parents, stop comparing your kids. Do you know how damaging it is for you to say, why won't why you be like your big brother? What? You just took a Renoir and compared it to a Monet? Those are two different masterpieces created by a master creator. It, it, it would be, it would be uh, I'm not wise to compare two things that were created and fashioned for different purposes, reasons, and at different times to have the same standard. And yet... You comparing your new husband to your last husband? You didn't think I was going to say it. He didn't even get a fair chance. He didn't even get a clean slate. Because he came in and you said, well, I ain't never had to. This is a new person. Okay, let me stop. I just feel there, there's a little anxiety raising in the room, Rashina. I feel it. All I'm saying to you right now is, if we don't unplug from this, this destructive engine of comparison, you will miss your calling doing something you were never fashioned and formed to do. Do you know how many people are working in fields right now that God has not given them any oil to be able to do that? And that's why they're burning out. If you've ever seen a car, it needs oil to be able to go through all of the pressure. The reason why you're burning out is ain't no oil on what you're doing. No oil. And you asking God and praying for God to do something new in you. He said, you need to change your engine. Let me stop. Because <laughs> the only reason you started doing that is because your best friend was going into that field and you wanted to go to the college with them. And so you said, well, I guess I could learn how to do that too. And so you went to a place and y'all ain't even going to be friends three years from when you start this situation. And so now you're in a whole field because you have a knack for it and you actually got good and you're good at everything that you do. So you actually do it. And then you actually excel and they're like, you can make this much money. You can get six figures doing it. You spent 15 years of your life being fashioned for something that God is going to require you to give up if you're ever going to reach your calling. And some of us are so stubborn that you wouldn't leave that job if the Holy Spirit came down like a dove and said, this is my child in whom I'm well not pleased and I need you to leave it. You still, because it's the status. It's the title. How am I, how am I leave being doctor, doctor? Yeah. Okay. You can be doctor whoever out of your calling. You can be professor whoever out of your calling. You can be CEO. Of the, I ain't working for nobody. Okay. Can I say something? I know this world has told you this. Everybody's not supposed to be an entrepreneur. You're going to spend the rest of your life. You, are, you have the ministry. See, y'all don't read your Bible. There's such thing called as the ministry of helps. There is the gift of administration. The gift. You can't grow it to nothing to administrate. So God needs to connect you with somebody. And you need to be okay not comparing yourself to somebody else. Stay in your spot. And do what God's called you to do. Because that's where you win at. And I know everybody not going to tell you that, but everybody not made to be an entrepreneur. Got all them t-shirts sitting in your closet. Don't nobody want them t-shirts? <laughs> Got all them pins. Don't nobody want them pins? 
We don't want them. You give them away and they, oh, thank you. <laughs> they set them. <laughs> Who help me, Jesus. But culture will have you fooled out here. Comparing yourself to people who made it doing that. And you'll be like, well, I can do that. And God's saying, I never called you to do that. Stop being consumed by it. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. This one whooped my tail. For we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. Comparison is not wise. This is God speaking through his word, telling you, should I be comparing myself to them? Comparison is not wise. What's the opposite of wise? Dumb. I'm going to use a good word. Ignorant. So, so, so let me put it in a point that's very in your face. Comparison is an act of ignorance. Every t- if the Bible says it's not wise to do, yet we're consuming our life comparing ourselves to their house and to their neighborhood and to their hairstyle and to their length and to their curl pattern and to their makeup and to their jawline. Oh, yeah, I'm coming for you. And to their, their booty and to they, and, and to they how, how do they calves look like that? And, and to the way they play drums and to the way they play keyboard. And we're comparing to the way that, that their kids act and, and we're comparing to the way that, that they eat and we're comparing all this stuff. The Bible says this is not wise, which makes it an act of ignorance. Next time you get on Instagram and start being mad because they on vacation, know that you are committing an act of ignorance. Y'all seen the little Instagram where, where I am mentally right now. You not there. You at work. Where you need to be mentally is check into this job and do everything that you've been paid to do as unto the, let me stop. See, this is CEO talk right now. You making a TikTok and what God is asking you to do is be fully committed. Now you posting a picture of you at the beach, you about to lose your job. You're not going to the beach. You're going to be driving to gathering place talking about you at the beach. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because you are so consumed in comparison and you're committing an act of ignorance. Com- this is the Bible, y'all. And some of y'all have siblings you've been comparing yourself to your whole life. That's why you get anxiety around all the holidays. Because you feel like you got to go there with something new. Oh, that you got to prove that you got to, some of us make markers and goals set around who we're going to be around so that we can prove to them we're enough. Now nah, by Christmas, I got to, no, 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 I ain't messing with Thanksgiving this year because by Christmas, I got to go back home and, and, and I, and I got to have a man. My sister was married at 22. My brother was married at 26 and I'm 35. My wretched life. God, what are you doing with me? If it's not your will for me to get married, Lord, just tell me. And you're doing all of this. And God said, literally, like, you, you're so much in comparison. When I send you the man or the woman, you wouldn't even recognize them because you have so many types. That you're comparing the person I have for you for? That you will dismiss what is supposed to help you become. And as a part of your destiny. Because you're comparing to something you'll never have. But I just want that. I mean, at least, I mean, I know I'm still working on my body, but he got to be, I mean, at least 6'4". And I mean, he ain't got to be ripped, but he got to be like toned. And you sitting over here looking like, never mind. But what I'm telling you, what, <laughs> what, if, what if you measured you how you measure other people? 
No, for real. What if you measured you? They always late. You was on time for this. But, but, but anything that's outside of this job, you don't keep your commitments. The Bible doesn't say at your job, your you yes be yes and your no be no. It says everywhere you go, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So all I'm saying is there's some people that are listening to this and they're prideful right now and they're self-religious right now. Think I don't compare myself to anybody, but you are silently judging. You have that Pharisee Sadducee swag. Yeah. You don't say nothing out loud, but it's all in your heart. You think you better than me. <laughs> you think you better than them. You think somehow that your sin don't stink too. But what I came to tell you is that everything that's in you is in me. And we all on this journey trying to figure out how to get sanctified, pure. And to do that, I can't be looking at you. Don't let comparison kill your calling. Yeah, comparison is an act of ignorance. Let's just go to Hebrews 12. See, see, see we always read this scripture, and I think we, we don't ever see it in light of us comparing ourselves to other people. We see it in light of like, oh, when we get to heaven, because there's going to be such a great cloud of witnesses. But watch this. Therefore, since we are surrounded, yadabaso, by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the faith, you need to do something. Let us strip off every weight. Oh, comparison. No, no, no. It's talking about sin. No, it's going to address sin in a minute. But every weight that you carry in is not a sin. So, so some of y'all, no, no, no. It's not a sin to, to, to actually have a relationship with that person. It's a weight. <laughs> and God's saying strip off the Wait, not just the sin. We're going to talk about the sin. But many times I can't even address the sin until I address the wait. Oh, God. And, and, and God's literally saying to us, I need you to address comparison, convenience, comfort. Not because they're sins yet. Because <laughs> they will turn into them. They're not sins. Everybody say, yeah. But they are weights now. And some of you are so bogged down that God can't put any burdens on you. You're so weighed down with comparison that if God told you to do something nobody's done, you don't even have the faith to be able to step out because you have so much. You actually have the strength for it. You don't have the space for it. Somebody's going to catch what I just said. God's literally saying you have so much weight on you right now comparison and convenience and he said you would have to strip off that weight to be able to handle the burden that I will give you to change your community to insect trafficking to be a person that stands up for justice to be able to love the people around you but you don't have the space but you still have the strength because you've been carrying around comparison since you were six your spiritual calf muscles is huge that means every time you get in front of people you thinking what do they think of me it must be exhausting to literally go everywhere do e can i tell you something that nobody's probably told you you look amazing you're doing good you could be way worse but you're still here. God has graced you with another day. He's still standing with you. He wants you to succeed. As long as there's breath in your body, there is purpose in your life. You are valuable. But all that can be said, and if you still don't believe it, have you ever tried to give somebody a compliment who didn't believe it? Yes. And it's literally like how they say water off a duck's back. I don't know if you've ever seen water fall off a duck's back, but they got on like a next level swimsuit that God gave them. And like literally you can see that they can go down and come up and go. And like all the beads of water, they will be completely dry. That's how some of it's not that you don't have people around you that are encouraging you. 
We hear. You just don't know how to receive it. It's because you've been cuffed to comparison. Oh, my God. That's the whole reason you got married. You were trying to create a picture you saw instead of marry somebody for the purpose that God showed you. Okay, let me, let me step back because I, I felt the anger. It says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. And then it addresses sin, especially sin. Okay? That so easily trips us up. And this is the thing about running in your lane. And let all of us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Do not run somebody else's race. Do not run somebody else's race. Well, how do I do that? With all of the things that are going on, it worked for them. God, you're not speaking to me. I don't know how to do this. There's so many things to focus on. How? How? Did you keep reading in the Bible? We do this by keeping our eyes on who? Jesus, the champion. He already won every race you're going to be in. He, he's, he's the champion who initiates. He says, ready, set, bow. He brings you into the game. And he's the one standing at the finish line. He initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy that was awaiting him, he did this too. He endured the cross, disregarding the shame. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. This, this, is, this is the thing I want to let you know. We can't compare because we have our own lane, our own set of rules, and our own expectations. And God's sitting in the grandstands of heaven saying, just run your race. Why? Because I put it there. This lane was not put by your parents. This lane was not put by your professor. This lane was not put by somebody that's a celebrity or a life coach. The lane I've called you to run is the lane I put in front of you. Run that race. Your joy is in that race. Your blessing is in that race. Your peace is in that race. Your rest is in that race. Your efficiency is in that race. Your family being whole is in that race. When you step outside of that and run somebody else's race because it looks good, you stepped out of the grace for your race. Okay? And, and do you know the quickest way to devalue something is to compare it to something else. You loved your stuff until you saw their stuff. Well, nobody's shoes better than your shoes until they came out with a new pair of shoes and 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 and, and I, holy spirit help me communicate everything that's in my heart right now because i if, if if i could just get you to do one thing i would get you to uncuff from comparison because then it would allow you the space to uncuff from comfort and convenience but right now you worried if what they doing and what they doing is everybody watching this series okay then i'll watch it you, you, we might be in cuffing season. God tell you to go by, back and watch Expect Effect. Well, that, that, that's not where everybody else is. I, I ain't asked you all that. I didn't, I didn't ask you what everybody else is doing. I said, stop comparing yourself. Somebody say, I got to stop, stop comparing this masterpiece. Say it one more time. I got to stop comparing this masterpiece. This is the most faith-filled thing you've said in a long time. Say it with faith. Say, I got to stop. Comparing this masterpiece. Has anybody ever had a toothache before? Now, I don't know. Um, for everybody who has not had a toothache, go to the dentist. Keep brushing your teeth. My mama said, that's right. <laughs> um, there is no pain in this world. Oh, my God. I got emotional. There is no pain in this world like a toothache, especially a toothache when you don't have dental insurance and a toothache when you're broke. <laughs> Ain't nothing like that pain. Some of y'all get them toothaches and like, oh, I'm gonna call Jim tomorrow and go get. There was a season in my life where there was only two options. Stay with the pain 
Yank that hoe out. That it, those was my only two options. Oh, excuse me, I got too real for y'all. I remember, I told you we a real church here. Progression, not perfection, all right. I remember having a tooth pain that was so bad, it had me outside with my shirt off, towel over my head, screaming in my neighborhood like this. Oh! Oh! My neighbors came outside and said, are you okay? I said, I'm just doing an exercise, the yoga, just practice. Y'all, this hurt more than anything I've ever experienced. And, it, it, and it, it, a toothache is the only thing that will really make a grown man cry. You can literally be sitting there, all the ore jail don't work no more. My father-in-law had me gargling whiskey. I was like, I'm about to just drink it because I need to be drunk right now. My whole mouth on fire. They couldn't see me for another week and a half. Oh. It messes with your attitude. Can't eat nothing. They ask you for things that your whole body still work, except your tooth, but you think that nothing else works. Can you lift that? Y'all wrong using my tooth? When I finally went to the dentist, I realized what happened is that there was a cavity that ate away at the foundation of my tooth. So much so, that it hit a, a nerve. Now, you ain't never ever experienced your body go into immediate paralyzation until something hits that. Okay, okay. Now, now, now I, wanna, I wanna bring this back to comparison because there's a progression of comparison. Comparison always starts with a cavity. Something that's missing. It could have been words people spoke over you. It could have been things that you saw that you knew you weren't. And there was something that was a hole created by this world. And now you are at the place where it can hit a nerve. That's why when you're scrolling, you see certain stuff and you're like, uh-uh. What did that hit? A nerve. That's why you can go certain places and you see certain type of people and they remind you of other type of people. You don't even know them, but they just remind you of people who treated you and it hits a nerve. Okay. And, 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 and I need everybody to see this. Comparison always starts with the cavity, a hole, something that you feel like needs to be filled, but it's not filled. So you start looking at other things to fill this hole that only Christ was made to remake. And that's why when I say comparison comes after there's a cavity is because if you like yourself, can't nobody mess with you about yourself. Like whatever area you're super confident in and you have God's grace in and you feel confident in, in that area, can't nobody mess with you in that. It's the places where there's a cavity. And, 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 and that's why I'm asking you, where are the cavities? Where are the holes? Where are the spaces in your life that the enemy has been filling up with comparison? That it's only hitting more nerves and hurting you deeper. You were fine with your house till you saw their house. You was fine with your car. You prayed for that car. You anointed that car with two quarts of oil every day and prayed in the spirit. It helped your devotion life until you saw that car. You was good with your wife until it was that time of the month and they giving you compliments at the water cooler. You was fine with your kids until they became teenagers. Okay, let me just stop. But you didn't. So the progression is it starts with a cavity, but write this down. A cavity becomes comparison. So, so, so there's, there's, there's such a place you can get with a cavity 
Do you have a picture of a cavity? I don't know if some of these people have ever seen a cavity before. Somebody said, no. I could just open some of y'all mouths and we could see it. But if, okay. So, so I, I gave them the PG rated version of a cavity. R- right, right there is a cavity and going down into that black part is where it can hit a nerve, okay? The reason the cavity is even there is because they were tasting or eating something that was not good (laughs) for their teeth. Nobody gets cavities eating lettuce. If you brush your teeth and you eat greens and chicken and fish, you don't get cavities. It's when you put sugar when you get things that your flesh likes and craves and desires more of, when you put that in your mind, those are the things that create cavities. And cavities can go to such a place where it hits a nerve where they can't fill in the tooth no more. Now, some of y'all know about this. But what ends up happening is they say the nerve has been exposed too long. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to kill the nerve. And at the moment of pain, you don't care. You murdered that nerve. Murder it now. But what they don't tell you at the point where you make this impulse decision because you don't want to feel the pain anymore is the effect that that space now has on all your other teeth. Take out one of your teeth, just one, and watch how your teeth do the Dougie (laughs) all around your gut. I'm not even playing. Them mugs start, and then they don't watch me whip. They'll do the whole, you will look at yourself, and because of taking out something that hurt in the moment, because the nerve was exposed, You've now opened yourself up to a whole nother set of problems. What are you saying? Comparison doesn't just come with comparison. It leads to coveting. Okay. I know these are big words we don't use in 2022, but they all through the Bible. The cavity goes to comparison and comparison turns into coveting. And now coveting is a sin. This is why it says it's not wise to compare because you're one step away from coveting. Why would you be close to sin if you could be far away in contentment? You can either live content or you can have a cavity or you can live in comparison or you can live in coveting. And God says, I want my children to be all the way over here content. God, if this is what you're giving me right now, I'm not comparing. I'm not comparing with them. I'm gonna stay right here. Yes, get married. Yes, have a successful bit. Yes, kids is beautiful. Yes, and still be good. My marriage still need work. Still be good. I'm not the weight I want to be. Still be good. Uh, see y'all. I'm trying to teach you, everybody say contentment. Contentment. And some of y'all are so mad right now because you don't even know anything else except comparing yourself. Even when you win, it's not a win until it was better than somebody else's win. You don't even celebrate what you did in case, and just, just in case somebody else did something greater. It takes away your thunder, takes away your, your fire, takes away, oh, I thought it was until it was somebody else's birthday. How, y'all know that everybody has birthdays on your birthday? And the more people you know, there will be multiple people that have birthdays on your same day. I met somebody who was so mad that it was somebody else's they new birthday on their birthday. And they literally let what that person did for their 30th birthday ruin something they had been looking forward to for the entire year. It's because they started. Everybody say, write this down, coveting. Yeah, comparison becomes coveting. And look at Exodus 20, 17. You shall not covet 
your neighbor's house. It's so specific. This is so nasty. I love the Bible. You shall not stop going through the neighborhood saying, how they get here? <sighs> you may not say it out loud, but you feel it in your heart. Don't covet their house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Stop looking at your friend's wife, wishing you would have met her first. Where, where, where the close camera? Give, give, me, give me a close. They need to see my face. Get, get, bring the camera right here. Stop looking at your friend's husband, wishing you would have had a night to show him how a real woman treats a man. Oh, I know what's in your heart. And you watching all these shows that are reinforcing this idea, this sex in the city idea that, and I ain't going to call too many shows because I know y'all watching, but I'm just going to tell you that that idea has you in sin. You are coveting covenant that God did not give you. And you're neglecting the thing that would be your good thing if you actually put effort into it. The grass is not greener on the other side. It's greener where you water it. And I'm telling y'all, husbands and wife, you need to stop. Well, I wish you would do something like that for me. And I wish you would. Do you need to stop doing that and you will reap what you sow. Some of y'all are waiting for somebody to go first and faith goes first. Faith says, I'm going to be the one to do it. I'm going to say sorry. I'm going to plan date night. I'm going to go. Well, I'm just sick of giving. Jesus wasn't sick of giving to you. He gave everything to you. And it is the season and the time for us to stop comparing let me stop. They, okay. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife, his male servants, or his female servants, or his whip. That's the ox. Or his donkey or their business. That was how they got around or how they did their business. Or anything. Any, everybody say anything. anything. That is your neighbor's. Coveting is a sin. This is one of the Ten Commandments. Like it's up there with thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not compare yourself to the place where you want what they want. We don't say it like that. But it's that raw in the Bible. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your husband. Don't want what they have. Be content with what you want. And I know somebody's like, but is there a desire? Is there a problem with wanting more? No. More of what God wants for you. But not more of what they got. Because at the moment people come into the equation, you're not supposed to be comparing to people. God's saying, would you let me give you your lane so you can run your race and get your life back? You're not living when you're comparing. It is, it is literally an exercise of frustration to look at everything God's given you and to look at something that God's given other people and devalue what God's placed in your hand. What I'm just trying to tell you right now is it's time to get uncuffed from comparison so you can actually live and have a happy, joyful, full of faith life that is content with what God has placed in your hands. Because all you have is all you need. What's in your hands right now? Look at your hands. Just look at them. Just put them out like this. There are things, there are children and influence and ideas and cures and solutions and love and joy and administration and help and there's things that God has placed in your hands that he has never coded anybody else in this world for except you. And comparison is robbing not just you, it's robbing all of us of the truest, greatest version that you are supposed to be. And today I'm asking you, uncuff from comparison. I feel the spirit right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know this is not an age thing. 
I ain't worried about these youngers. I ain't worried about them. I meet old heads all the time that just ask, act like because you're over the age of 60, you don't, you don't care no more. Yeah, you still got that crease on all your jeans. The mugs be at Yale cleaners all the time. Cause Let me stop. Because you desire to be presented and looked at and done a different way. We all got our things. And God's saying, just uncuff. Because mm-hmm. if it goes from a cavity, well, let me, just, <laughs> let me just say it like this. We all started out as con- content. Like, like, like when you come into this world, don't take, it don't take much to satisfy you. Food and a changed diaper. You're not looking at other babies like, what you eat? <laughs> Demarcus, what kind of milk you got over there? <laughs> Trevor, what does white milk taste like? What does black milk taste like? What does Hispanic milk taste like? Don't nobody know. <laughs> they are content with what they're get- We learn comparison. We are teaching our kids comparison. How, y'all, I'm just trying to tell you something that's killing our, we literally talk about, we ain't going to that church this Sunday because they worship don't be right. You literally just put into the next generation, choose a church by the worship being the style you like. Not if you're called there to help and serve and become who God's called you to be. If the worship, they may need you for the worship to be right. They may need you. I ain't going there because, and, and that's the problem. You don't want to be a solution when that's who God created you to be. But I'm comparing. What are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? And, and this is why we, we, can't, we can't stay in content if we got taught and we got a cavity and now we have comparison and then we end up in covet, covetousness. And I want to say this, sin, that, that, Covening and any sin that we have over here is a a illegitimate response to a legitimate need. I'm going to say it again. Sin is not this crazy thing. You actually need to be whole. So anytime you sin, it is a illegitimate response to a legitimate need. You need peace. So what you start doing is going to placebos. And things that cannot fill you up and you do things that cause you to sin, but it's because you actually need peace. You want love. That is a legitimate need. But laying down with everybody is not going to give you that. It's an illegitimate response to a legitimate need. I just want to let everybody know that's like, man, I I keep messing up. What you need is real. Where you get it from is wrong. You're not a bad person. You're human. And so what I'm telling you right now is the reason we have to stop comparing is because we got to get it from the right source. James chapter 4, verse 2, it says, you want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. That is some nasty Bible right there. God said, stop trying to get it without me. Come to me. You want a home that can entertain people? Not a home because they got a home. You want a home so that you can be able to to facilitate healing for people? Come ask me. God is saying, you want to be effective in ministry and you want to learn more? God says, come ask me. You want your children to be raised in the admonition of God and be able to love Jesus all the rest of their life and you raising them in a world where Snapchat is taking over? Come ask me. I'll teach you. But you got what you don't want and you can't have it because you're asking the wrong person. You ever been at a restaurant asking the wrong person for help? What do you say when they can't help you? Let me speak to the manager. And if the manager can't help, let me speak. I'm trying to go as far up the chain as because somebody has the authority 
to change my situation. God's saying, stop going to all these people that do not have the authority to change your situation. Ask me for it. Verse 3, and even when you ask, uh uh-oh, you don't get it because your motives are wrong. You want only what gives you pleasure. You adulterous, you adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I'm going to say it again. If you want to be a friend of the world, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. This is all leading out of us wanting and desiring things that God said, that ain't in your lane. So be content with what I gave you. Let me put it in a point. Comparison is human, but not holy or helpful. I want to acknowledge it's human. Oh, when, when you get older, it's like, ah, their car, their body, their calling, their platform, just trying to get like, just want to be able to do like. But the true problem is, it's human, but it's not holy. And it's not helping you. And that's why I look at the story of the prodigal son. And and I've changed it after this cuffing season. It's not, we we talk about the prodigal son. But I call it two cuffed brothers. Y'all know the story? In Luke 15, where there was one brother that was like, yo, daddy, give me all my inheritance. I'm going out to turn up, turn up. Turn up, turn up, turn up. And he goes, no, I want it now. He's like, I got plans for you. No, now. Daddy gives him the inheritance, goes out, turns up for a little bit, loses everything that dad gave him and provided for him. It was the grace that he had anything in the first place. Jesus is telling this parable. He literally goes and squanders and is like, ah, well, I'm going to live out here in the world like everybody else. And this man finds himself in a pig pen. Looking at what pigs eat, which if you know anything about farming, pigs eat anything. Excuse me, everything. The, 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 it don't, trash, scraps, other animals feast it. You put it in, they call it a trough, and they just eat whatever. This man had gotten so low in his life, having such a big cavity Comparing himself to people out here, it robbed him of his calling and his identity as a kid of royalty. So much so where he had been in that state and he's looking at what the pigs is eating like, "Mm, I wonder what they share. And the crazy thing about this is we look at this story and we don't see ourselves. But many of us have been so in positions that we're taking things. Oh, what's the name of this series? Cuffing season. What is cuffing season? It's when you settle for something less than the standard because of isolation. This man was isolated and he had devalued his situation. And now he's looking at trash like it's good. And he has an idea. Let me go back to my father's house. And we know the story. The prodigal goes back. Daddy's like, is that my boy? He's waiting on him. He goes out there every day trying to see if he's coming out. He doesn't wait like Father God doesn't wait till you get right. You start making a step towards him and he's running after you with grace. He says, get the ring, get the robe, get new shoes. My boy is trying to get y'all better playing the biggest party tonight. We celebrating because he was lost, but now he's found. We love this story because it's most of our story. But there's another brother. And we just kind of leave him to the side. We always talk about the brother who came back to God. But I just want us to visit him for just five minutes to figure out if this brother was cuffed to comparison. Luke 15, 25, 32. Meanwhile, the older brother was in the field. When he came near to the house, he heard music and dancing. What the... So he called one of the servants and asked him, what is going on? Your brother has come home, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf. And because he has him back safe and sound, because he has him back safe and sound, the older brother became angry and he refused to go in. Why? Because he was comparing what he had done and what his prodigal brother had done. 
that quick, y'all, it didn't even take two seconds for him to put himself against his brother and compare. And look what it did. Write the point down. Comparison keeps you out of rooms you were supposed to go in. Oh, that's nasty. This man had a, a seat right next to his daddy and his brother. And because he looked at what he had done and what he thought this brother didn't deserve and what this person didn't deserve in their business and what this church didn't deserve and what people that come from backgrounds like that don't deserve and people with that skin color don't deserve because he did it that quick. He became angry and he stayed out of a room that he was supposed to be in. And I just want to tell you that if you were cuffed to comparison, you have taken your name off of seats that God already had pre-marked you to be in. You keep comparing to them. You're supposed to help them. <laughs> the reason I had to uncuff from comparison is because my next connection was through somebody I was comparing myself to. And God said, I can't give you the next thing because that's the vehicle I'm going to use. And if you see them as an enemy and you see them as somebody that, that makes you feel devalued, you'll never show up fully to what I've called you to do. So you need to celebrate them instead of compare to them because that's your next level. And so many people, because they're, compare, they're cuffed to comparison, you sitting outside of a room pouting that you should be leading in. The church didn't recognize mine. Okay. That's why I don't go to that. Okay. Three years from now, you'll be the CEO. But you won't, you won't even start by apologizing for you. You did. That was wrong what you did. Well, if they would have never, then I would have. No, 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 no. No. That's not maturity in Christ. Okay, let me. Start. Can I give you another point that I saw right there? Because it, it, it just says it in that verse 28, the older brother became angry. Everybody say angry. angry. And he refused to go in. So it, 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 comparison keeps you out of rooms you're supposed to go in. But this is the other thing it does. It, it makes you emotionally irate. That quick he got angry. And being emotionally irate leads to isolation. That quick comparison, boom. He says, what I need to do is stay out on an island. And isolate. And this is the, the ignorance of comparison. Then they'll know. <laughs> that I don't, I, don't, I don't approve of this. I don't get down like that. Ain't nobody going to mess up with me like that. And like, oh yeah, we know. The truth of the matter is, people who really enjoy the party don't even care what you're doing. Can I tell you something? I've been off of Instagram for six months. We didn't notice. <laughs> That's why you got to announce when you leave and, and when you came back. We don't even know. You mad and angry and frustrated. And we don't even care. Because when you're consistently concentrated on your calling, it is very difficult to keep up with people who because of why you don't even know. The dad thought he would be excited about the party. The brother probably wanted to see his brother, but because he got emotionally irate, he isolated himself, mad over something nobody even knows he's mad about. Half the things that, <laughs> half the things that you won't talk about and that people have now experienced the distance but don't know what's wrong, like, like can, they don't know. They don't know it hurts you. I mean, yeah, if you put all the blues clues together, they could figure it out. But the, 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 truth, the truth of the matter is they're dealing with their own cavities and their own insecurity. Nobody's paying attention to the details. On March 28th, you called, but you didn't return my phone call. And so, so then on April 6th, I seen you at the store, but you acted like you didn't know me. And so then May, I seen you at, baby. Could you just tell me? 
hey, I've been feeling distance in our relationship and it's made me actually feel different. And I saw that you posted about going to our other friend's birthday party and I started to compare myself and our relationship that we've been in for a long time to that relationship. And I just wanted to know, is everything okay with us? And two sentences from them could turn everything that's been comparing you into something that brings it right back together. But pride will keep you outside the room. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? You not coming in? No. And some of y'all been like that for decades. Decades. Okay. Look at the grace of the father, Luke 15, 28. So his father went out and pleaded with him. There's something about God coming and finding you. I don't know if you've ever had that happen, but like daddy knows you're not there. He should be here by now. He should have answered the call by now. He should be leading by now. She should be here using the giftings I gave her by now. By now, she, she should be helping some. Where is? I'll be right back. Y'all keep turn up. Hey, yeah, turn up. <laughs> hey, boy. What you doing? Why you? I sent them to tell you. Your brother's home. We got a party all week. I got a special seat for you. I got a purpose for you. I got a calling for you. Now the plan I have for you and your brother together can happen. Everything I built was for y'all's legacy. It took both of y'all to do what I planned to do. When he walked away, you shouldn't be competing. You should be completing. I got something for y'all to do. Verse 29. Dad, all these years, I've been slaving for you and never disobeying you. <sighs> Yet you never gave me even one young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. Watch. If you don't catch anything else I say, please catch this. Comparison makes you a slave and not a son. Did y'all see it in the scripture? He literally said, all these years, I've been slaving for you. Comparison had jacked up his perspective so much. That he didn't see himself as an heir working for something he would one day take over. He knows that his daddy got enough to give inheritances. And he knew that he was the only one that stayed and obeyed. He admits it. But because of his own perspective and him being cuffed to comparison, he saw his own self as a slave and not a son. And my question to you today is in the view of all God's grace and mercy. Are you a slave or are you a son? Nobody can make you a son except the father. And God has been telling you, I love you. I'm pleased with you. I got a plan for you. I made you a masterpiece. And you're still listening to the comparison of culture. God's saying, I, your DNA is my DNA. When you gave your life to me, you became a new creature. I made you a joint heir with my son, Jesus. That's your elder brother. Why in the world? Are you settling for the title of slave? When I've called you a son, a daughter, 
cut from royalty. Somebody who's supposed to stand in any sphere and represent my name and be my representative wherever I'm at. You are not a slave. Somebody needs to receive that. Lift your hands right now. I pray the spirit of spiritual slavery off of your people right now. Oh, I feel that thing. I pray in the name of Jesus that, that your children would see themselves as heirs. Father, that this whole kingdom that is being established is to lift your name and give us dominion on the earth. Father, I pray right now that every wrong thought process, every perspective, Father God, every pain, every hurt, every trauma that has robbed us of our royal identity, I thank you that is being restored in your presence right now. And we would stand up no longer as slaves, but as sons and daughters of the most high God. In Jesus' name, if you receive it, go ahead and give our Father, our Abba. Oh, come on, somebody in the back just got it. If you're going to be a son, a daughter, if you're going to know your identity. Imagine Prince Harry and Prince William walking around begging for something. That wouldn't happen. Why? Because they know their identity. Golly. Luke 15 30. We almost out of here. Can I have five more minutes, y'all? Can we finish this up? Okay. Um, Luke 15 30. He mad. He said, Yet you never let me even have one young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Comparison. But when this son of yours has squandered your property with prostitutes, he was keeping tabs. Comparison always knows details. You working real hard. You, you, had to, you had to pinch that picture all the way in. Y'all know how y'all be. Is that Jerome in the background? I see you. We're prostitute and he comes home. And you kill the fattened cat and you still show him grace and mercy? And you still celebrate him? Watch this. Comparison paralyzes your perspective and convinces you to live below your privilege. When you compare, he's literally comparing himself to the brother who lost his inheritance. And he still got his. We don't never think about it. He's been living beneath his privilege. The entire, he could have had a goat every day of the week if he wanted to. But his daddy doing it for somebody else was the first time he ever had the perspective to see that he might have had permission. <sighs> the, the, the reason you have to run in your lane is because there's things you're praying for that you already have permission for. But you don't even ask about it or think about it or see it or want it until somebody else got it. And God said, I, now I can't give it to you because it's coming from the wrong motives. But if you would just say, God, enlarge my territory. Let me see me bigger. Let me see what you placed in my hand. You ain't got to do it for nobody else, but show it to me. Give me the dream. Give me the vision. Give me the idea. Let me be the one that you enlarge their stakes. Don't let me just want it because they got it. Show me. Oh, I felt that thing. Somebody say, show me, God. Show me what's for me. Show me how you want me to live. Show me how you want me to bless. Show me how you want me to learn. Show me how you want me to be. Your hands and feet on this earth. I came to tell some people you already have permission. For things that God's placed in your hands. But you're so busy looking at what everybody else is doing. That you don't even want it until they got it. I wish the daddy would have asked. Have you ever asked me for a goat before? You killed a goat for him. When the last time you asked him for a goat? You ain't never. That's never been a request of yours. If you would have requested a goat. 
Instead of Taco Tuesday, it would have been Goat Taco Tuesday. You could have had a goat every week. But it wasn't until you saw my grace on somebody else that now it didn't make you celebrate it. It made you think that I was less of a father. Because I would do it for them and not for you. I'm just trying to help you right now, y'all. That God's view and you in it is messed up by how you see yourself. God hasn't changed. But you think he has. Because he gave somebody else something to show his grace that you could have had every day of the week, but you just ain't never asked for it. Oh, God, I'm in heavy water now. I'm, I feel like I'm sinking over here. All, all I'm just telling you right now is this man's, his perspective was paralyzed by comparison. And he was living below his privilege. Verse 31, the father speaking to all of us, my son, my daughter. You are always with me. And everything that I have is yours. I just need to stop there and let you know. God's saying to you, my son, my daughter, you're always with me. And everything I have, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, all of these things. Everything I got, prophecy, the ability to interpret dreams, the ability to speak in tongues, the ability to steward gifts, everything that comes with me, gifts of administration and helps, everything I got access to, you can have to fulfill your calling. You've always been with me. You got everything you need because you got me. Ooh. The, the, the real statement is all you have is all you need because you have God. Like, 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 it's not just all you have is all you need. There's stuff I don't have except when I put it in view of God. Everything I need, I have. He said, but we had to celebrate. This is why we turn up over one person giving their life to Christ. Like, do you know? Like, like they told me this morning. 15,500 people have gotten saved in 2022. Oh, y'all better help me celebrate. Online, in this building. I said 15,500 people gave their life. They came home. Glory to God. That's the vision of this church. Transformation in Christ. But the crazy thing is, it's hard for some people to celebrate. Because you see the transformation in somebody else's life and it makes you feel like God could do more in your life. See, that's why we have to be uncuffed from comparison. He said we had to celebrate and be glad. Because this brother of yours, wow. He didn't say my son. Y'all, you got to read the Bible. He didn't say, because my son is returned. He said, this has something to do with you. Every child of God that wins is a win for this family. Every kingdom business, every kingdom family, every, the reason I'm celebrating Osby's weight loss is because that's a win for the whole kingdom. The reason I'm celebrating, oh, come on, another year of life for my brother Brentham is because that's a win for the whole kingdom. The reason I'm celebrating 42 years of ministry for Bishop and Pastor Debbie is because that's a... When you put your hands together for somebody else, it still affects you. He said, this brother of yours, that's why I start claiming other people's blessings. My friends get a new house. We got a new house. You don't even know how to celebrate. I bring Welch's to the party. Ah, you got a new house. That means we got a new house. It's another place I can lay my head. If, 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 oh, God, y'all don't even understand. When Transformation Church wins, the body of Christ wins. 
We gave over $8 million away last year. Y'all don't want to celebrate with me. But when people, y'all don't hear me. You should be, every time we give $100,000 to a church, you should be shouting because you might be next. Oh my God. I'm going to have to do a whole week on celebration, Don, because we have lost the art of celebrating if it doesn't immediately impact us. So we had to celebrate because your brother was dead and now he's alive again. He was lost and now he is found. The most important part of this whole thing, look at this, comparison always kills compassion for people. You will not have compassion if you're stuck in comparison. The very people you're measuring yourself against, which is an act of ignorance, according to the Bible, are the very people you're called to help. About five years ago, I stopped criticizing celebrities. They don't even make sense. Because I knew at some point, God was going to raise my influence to a place that people who don't know me, don't know where I live, don't know how I serve, were going to be able to give their opinion about stuff they have no idea about. And I, I took it a step further. Some of y'all been here on Monday night prayers. Like, I'll pray for celebrities. Like, I'll call out people's names and I'll begin to pray for them and intercede and different things like that because it's different. The reason I started doing that, because now I've started to receive some calls of people you would know. Hey, man, I just, I see how you handle yourself and, could, and it just seemed real. I'm going through a situation. I just need you to pray for me. There's no way that God would trust those people with me if I was com still comparing myself to the God is a loving father. He's not about to send his masterpiece into the hands of crooked people who are looking only for what they can get out of this situation. The reason that God has trusted me with some people who may be in this valley of decision and they need to be like all of us compelled to Christ. Just cause you have money don't mean you have everything. How you killing yourself and taking pills and Xanax and Lee and lean and all that stuff with 25 million in the bank, 25 million in the bank, Ray, And you still have to take pills to go to sleep. You got four houses and no home. Yo, and what God told me, he said, the reason I had to change your heart and you had to stop comparing yourself is because you cannot have compassion for somebody you are comparing with. And the very people that some of y'all need to forgive, you have to stop comparing yourself to them first. That family member, that sibling, uh oh, let me say one that's strong, that parent. I ain't nothing like my mama. Well, <laughs> they kind of raised you. And they're right there in the core memories. <laughs> and you need to forgive them. But every time you discipline your kids, anytime anybody tells you try to say something or do something, you're so, you're so consumed with comparison to that and what you don't like about that, and what you don't like about your dad, and what you don't like about that, that you literally won't have the compassion to even see them as a human. And I just wanna, I wanna give us the chance to uncuff from comparison and ask God to come in and, and do a work on our heart. You can't help, you can't help somebody that you hate and all. You'll never serve anybody you don't see. You won't give to people when you're holding a grudge. And you won't free anyone that you're ready to fight. This is why we have to uncuff from comparison. 
Caleb, come out here because I'll preach another two hours. I got too many more notes. I, I, I hope somebody, this is hitting your heart today. Because it's going to come for you as soon as you get out of this service. Some of y'all has been trying to attack you right now. You're going to go to, some of y'all need to take a break from Instagram. Facebook, you're feeding the beast. <laughs> you can't even be happy about the apartment. You prayed for that apartment. You asked God to give you the down payment for that apartment. You asked God to bless. And he gave you a bed and a comforter. And now, because you've seen somebody, that ain't even a house. They're a real estate broker. they just taking a video of somebody else's house. That ain't even where they live. You, want to, you know one of the things, I can't stand, this ain't even spiritual. But thank you for giving the music so that, that it feels more spiritual. But when you go in the high-end like stores, like Louie and Gucci and all them people. Have you ever had the people who work there act like they own the store? I'll be looking at them like, you work here. But for some reason, just being in the atmosphere of wealth and they see you and they looking you up and down and what you got on and what you wearing and then like, they can't afford this and they won't give you service. Oh, y'all don't hear me. They won't give you service because they don't, they don't know who your father is. And it's so crazy that a lot of times we acting like the person right now that's not getting the service. But in many cases, we're the people judging other people and comparing ourselves to them because they ain't been saved that long. They're baby Christians. What an arrogant, pompous statement for somebody who's been at that same spot. They're baby. I can't associate with baby Christians. And I just have to be what, you, what you're proving to us is you're not like Jesus. Because he was drawn to the least of these. Let the children come. Let the ones who are broken and don't get it. Because I'm not comparing myself to them. I'm compassionate towards them. Three very simple ways to kill comparison. Write them down and let's go home. The easiest way to kill comparison, constant celebration. I'm talking about start cheering for everything. Start, start celebrating. Send an extra text. Don't just like it on a social media platform. Hey, I saw that y'all having a baby. I just wanted to let you know. I know you're struggling with infertility. God is giving you a great opportunity to see a miracle as well as be content in the season you're in. Celebrate every person you can who has what you desire to have. Until your heart is purified to the point to where it's not even fake. It's a real thing. When I see my friends in ministry getting new buildings and doing, I literally, I am celebrating. I'm sending texts. I'm, I'm, why? Because I know what it's like to believe God. I'm not saying, well, when God going to do it again for us? No. Everybody say constant celebration. Kills comparison. Second thing. If you want to kill comparison be confident in your calling I have come to the conclusion I will never be T.D. Jakes and I'll never be Joe Osteen I'll never be Stephen Furtick I'll never be some of my favorite preachers in the world and that used to bother me because I wanted the impact and the outcome but I would have spent my whole life Living in a facade to hopefully get something that ain't even coming because I'm in the wrong lane. So I decided I'm going to be me. I'm going to show up everywhere as myself. I promise you. I went to the PGA tournament. What was that? Yesterday, the day before. Now, I don't know how many of y'all been to country clubs. But... It's a completely different environment in there. Everybody dressed like they playing golf. Ain't nobody playing except them few people. <laughs> I 
I have so many funny stories from that trip. But I went with two of my homeboys. And these bros dressed like they was playing golf too. And I was like, is y'all playing? And I was, they had on different, I was like, okay. They said, what you wearing? Jordan ones? A big old chain? I, I'm going to wear a snapback. I may have been the only person in that country club with Jordans on. But I was completely comfortable being myself. As soon as I walked in there, comparison tried to jump on me. Because it'll try. I mean, I walked in there and everybody, you saw them look at me. I was like, I don't know, a bright colored shirt? Or all the designs. I like that shirt. Everybody else is in solid, like pink and b- blue, and I, I liked my shirt. And I walked in there, and it tried to jump on me. And God said, show up here like you show up everywhere. <sighs> Boy, I started waving. Hey, what's up? What's up? I see him looking at me like, <laughs> You know, when you ain't been nowhere, you don't even know what to do. Like, <laughs> by the end of that experience, I'd almost met Tiger, and I know he heard me. I know he had to have heard me. And he did see me. I know he saw me in that shirt that I had. But when I left there, I didn't feel like I had to become somebody or something else. I wasn't cuffed to comparison. I went there as myself. I left as myself. And I'm asking you to show up everywhere that God has called you to be as you. Does that mean he doesn't keep working on you? No, because some of y'all are stubborn. I'm going to have to talk about that another level. This is me. That's been you for 14 years. And God never leaves anything he loves the same. So there should be progression, not perfection okay you got it but be confident in your calling third thing last thing how to kill comparison compare only to Christ comparing only to Christ well there's only one person that you should be comparing yourself to the only measuring stick the only standard Jesus. That's the whole reason God sent him. They need, they need a standard. They need a playbook. They need a measuring stick. Could you just give that to him, Jesus? Live 33 years. Don't sin. I know it's going to be hard, but don't sin. Show him how to deal with adversity. Show him how to deal with trouble. Show him how to deal with submission to authority. Show him how to deal. And so forever, I can leave this Bible And I can allow them to only compare themselves to you. Remember, it told told us in the scripture, how do we do this? Keeping our eyes on who's the one who started it and will finish it. I'm going to put it in a point and we're going home. Christ should be our only comparison. Not to see how far we are, but to see how close we are getting. Let me say it one more time. Christ should be our only comparison. Not to see how far we are, but to see how close we are getting. Every step of faith. Every right decision. Every temptation we ignore. Every confession we make. Every time we lift up our hands. Every time we say, I'm sorry. You look up to Jesus and you don't say, oh God, I'm just so far. Don't have the perspective like that brother that lived below his privilege. Have the perspective as a son. I'm getting closer. God, I'm getting closer. You're not that far away. Five years ago, we was way back there and I'm not all the way where I want to be, but I'm getting closer. Hands lifted all over. Father, I thank you. 
that you would uncuff us from comparison. Thank you for being the most high God. And thank you that all over this world today we are deciding we will no longer be slaves, but we will be sons and daughters. Hmm. Receive that. Said, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Hmm. Said, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Just sing that out a few times. Just say, said, I'm no And I am Yeah Just one more time I'm no longer Sin I am What's the next part destiny Hmm Come on, lift it up. Receive this right now. Thank you, Lord. Can stand and say, I am a child of God. Listen, 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 listen. If you've been cuffed to comparison in an area of your life, I want you to do something right now. I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to take a step of faith. I want you to stand to your feet. Yeah, all over, whether you're in your house, you might be at your cubicle, your, your, your coworkers may be looking at you, just act like you're stretching, it's okay. Yeah, just, yeah, it's all good. And just lift your hands and say, I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave. Said I am. Oh, I feel the presence. Father, I thank you that you're uncuffing us right now. I'm no longer. Hey. Yeah, something's happening for your home, your mind, your perspective. With your hands lifted, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every person that has admitted they've been cuffed to comparison. Today, would you, would you feel the cavity? Feel the hole in us that was made when we were a child, that was made when we moved to that city, that was made by maybe our parents not being there, that was made, Father, by that relationship damage. God, I thank you that you would heal the cavity and there would be no room for comparison. Father, for every person that has been coveting, God, today I'm praying for all of us to go back to the start of actually being content yep let's pray for that father thank you for the spirit of contentment to rise inside of your church father god i thank you father god that where we are is not where we're always going to be but father let us recognize that here is holy and there's something you can do here and you can get the glory here and you can move in our spirits and you can prepare us for what's next right here father let us no longer be a slave to comparison but let us accept who we are as sons and daughters, Father. And let us be content with your love. Today, let it change the way we act. Change the way we talk. Change the way we walk. Change the way we wake up, Father. And let us have compassion for others. Because we're no longer comparing ourselves to them. Father, let us be wise. And no longer compare. I pray that you are uncuffing your children today. Marriages are getting stronger. Families are coming together, Father. I declare businesses are going to be joyful again, Father God, because you are bringing us into a place of contentment. And we let you do whatever you want to do in us, God. We accept being a child of God. In Jesus' name. As even I'm singing that song, there's a group of people that have not committed to being a child of God yet. 
You've not given your life to him. Your name has not changed. And today I want to invite you into the family. It's just a bunch of your brothers and sisters that you don't have to compare to. We all been in the pig's pen in some area of our life. And we're going to celebrate you. You'll see in just a minute. If you come back to the home where daddy's waiting on the porch, he wants to give you a ring. He wants to give you new sandals. He wants to put a new robe on you. And you're about to get about 25,000 people celebrating what God's doing in your life. I don't care what trough you were drinking and eating out of last night. The grace of God and your place at the table and the party is waiting on you right here in the kingdom of God. Today, I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. It is the greatest one decision I've ever made. It took me from being a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography, had an insurance fraud case, had felonies, had to do all kinds of, y'all, I was a mess. But God said, with all of that, give it to me. Don't compare yourself to them. Don't, don't compare yourself to them. Just come to me. And I'll give you a calling. And I'll give you a career. And I'll change your character. And I'll put you in a lane. And I'll allow you to run. And today, I'm not a perfect man. I'm a progressing man. That is trying to get as many people to daddy's house as possible. And today is your day of salvation. Get up off the pig pen. And come back to the palace. We've been waiting on you. On the count of three, we're about to pray. And if you want to be included in this prayer, to give control of your life back to the only one, the master creator of you, his masterpiece. I want you to just lift your hands. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, I'm proud of you, but more than that, your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life for eternity. Three, just shoot your hand up in the building or around the world. Yeah, I see you. I see you. I see you, my brother. I see you, my sister. And if I don't see you, God sees you. Heaven is standing up right now. We're clapping, but God is rejoicing at a whole nother level. So we're going to pray. There's thousands of people who are going to celebrate you. There's 15,500 that at Just Transformation Church this year have done what you're about to do. So today we're adding to that number. And I want you to know your journey doesn't have to be compared to anybody else's. Today God wants you. Now Transformation Church, y'all know nobody prays alone. We're going to all pray this prayer out loud for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. So let's just lift our hands and say, God, take control. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. Today, I uncuff from comparison and I cuff to you. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again with all power just for me. Today, I give you my life. I will serve you. I will love you forever. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again just for me. Change me, renew me, transform me. I'm yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we start a party? I said, can we start a party? Give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah! The party is just beginning for you. We want to walk with you. If you just made that decision towards Christ, I want you to text the number on the screen and some of our party hosts are going to text you back and we're going to give you information that's going to help you on this journey. And I want you to know that we're here for you as a church. We want you to get into B groups and get around community. We want you to let somebody know your name. We want, we want you to come to Monday night prayer. Some of this stuff is just the catalyst, just the beginning. But we want you every Monday night at 6 p.m. 
If you're in Tulsa, you can come to this building now. And we're praying, getting ready back to launch and do all the different things. Get here and pray. If you're watching online, you can watch online. We're just asking God to do something on the inside of us and transform us and uncuff us. And we want to celebrate with you. So please text that number on the screen. And for the rest of us, this week, God's going to challenge the word. And we're going to be okay letting him fill in all the gaps. Because I'm no longer a slave. <laughs> I'm a child of God. Father, bless these people. Keep doing this work in us. God, keep giving me revelation so that I can share it with your people, God. We're uncuffing from comfort and convenience and comparison because we will no longer love things that don't love us back. We trust you and we believe you in Jesus' name. Until next time, go out and live a transformed life. Let's give God one more hand of praise.